poverty in St. Louis North Side. Our next speaker has acquired a lifetime of experience in what it's like to grow up in America as an African American male. Steve Hill served for five years in the United States Marine Corps and later joined the California Department of Corrections. He gained insight into the system by working at two maximum security prisons for 10 years. His, he takes the stage now with a stand-up performance that tells people to, tell, to see relevant issues from a very funny but drastically different perspective. Everyone, give a warm welcome to Steve Hill. All right, they call this mission impossible because they, they're giving me like 10 minutes to kind of explain our current situation with shootings of African Americans and the policing situation, which cannot be done in 10 minutes, trust me. But I'll, I'll try to uh, give you as much information, give you guys a, an understanding of what's going on with uh, policing in America. Now, as was previously stated, I'm from St. Louis, born on the north side. Anybody here ever been to the north side of St. Louis? Yeah, let me tell you something. North side of St. Louis make Compton look like a vacation destination. <laughs> Matter of fact, you can go on a game show in St. Louis and win a trip to Compton. <laughs> That's how bad St. Louis is. Any, anyways, I went to the United States Marine Corps. I was in... Uh, Ronald Reagan was our commander-in-chief at the time, and we had like 242 of us blown up over in Lebanon. You guys remember that? That was when I first got real conscious about terrorism. And in some part, I kind of blame Ronald Reagan for 9-11, because if we had done something back then to show our strength and power when I was a young Marine ready to kick some butt, probably would have never had a 9-11. But a lot of people in the, on the conservative side, they don't, they don't quite seem to understand that. But anyway, there was, a, there was a certain type of individual, certain type of person I noticed in the Marine Corps that no matter what outreach you made to them, no matter how you enacted with them or how, how you approached them, there was a certain type of individual who just didn't seem to appreciate your presence <laughs> for some reason. They were, they were quite religious guys, my comrades, but I always noticed and got this feeling when working with them. I used to be at Camp Pendleton, 1st Tank Battalion, and they would, you never could like be friends with these people. And then later on, when I joined the Department of Corrections, I ran into some of the same type of people in, in law enforcement. You cannot befriend them. And like, for example, when the riots broke out in LA, I was working at uh, California Correctional Institution at Tehachapi Maximum Security Prison. We actually had these people that were cheering the riots, telling everybody, oh, this is, this is great, job security. I was like, you inhumane bastard. People are dying in the street, and you're cheering because you're going to have more overtime and more positions to work. Now, let me fast forward to today. Trump supporters. <laughs> this, is, this is the way it is, folks. There's a certain percentage of people in, in, in America that will never like us, that have always hated us, and they are, they are the ones who joined the police departments, they joined the, the forces, and to me, it's like people are, people are so worried about, let's say, the Syrian refugees immigrating, and they go, oh, it's going to be terrorists in there with them. Well, black people feel the same way about our policing departments, because you get a certain percentage of these guys, and trust me, coming from the military, going into being a peace officer, you're, you're welcome with open R. The, the vetting isn't that much. You know, the standard's not very high. But you get these same people going into the police department. And that's what I think the biggest problem is. That's where the problem comes in with, with people having a, a lack of apathy, sympathy. They don't have an understanding and really could care less 
about a capitalistic society where everybody can't make it. So you have this hyper segregation in communities, and then you have these police who work in these communities all the time. They see the same people committing the same type of crimes, which is basically trying to eat, and you wind up with all these police shootings. That's basically in a nutshell for me. I've seen it. I've been around these people. They're, they're basically Trump supporters with a gun. So if you can imagine how that would be for a typical African American. Now let me tell you, where I live in, in North Los Angeles County, I've been appraising real estate for the last 14 years. You guys know, know what happened with the little mortgage meltdown thing? Being a real estate appraiser, being a black guy, running around distressed properties, foreclosures, appraise, I've had the police called on me so many times. I've been approached by so many neighbors coming out going, can I help you? And they don't see that I have a camera, a clipboard, measuring tape. Can I help you? It's like, no, you can't help me. Are you serving breakfast? No. <laughs> I've had, the, I've had a, a police put a gun about a foot away from my head coming out of a gate from the back of a house where someone had called the police because there's a black guy walking around this abandoned house. They didn't know I'm appraising this, this property. But we go through this all the time. And I want you guys to know. So when you see Black Lives Matter, it's a damn shame that we have to even say that. But I understand and I want you guys to have an understanding that the problem is the certain percentage of people, and it's basically the Republican base, <laughs> they got Trump where he is, that will never like us, they will never want us to advance, and we're always in competition with these people. And basically, they're, they're middle class, they're rich, they're poor, but it's always that percentage there, and they get into our police forces, and they shoot us. Doesn't sound too good, huh? But this is, we have to deal with when you're an African-American citizen, citizen in your own country. Now that I've made you guys all feel good, <laughs> is my time up yet? Yeah. Where we at? I know, I know, I know. And, I, and trust me, I've just scratched the surface. I could speak for another hour about our prison system. Just, just let me, our prison system, for you guys that don't know this, our prison system is, our prisons are full of blacks and Mexicans. Secular groups, I wish you guys would start taking tours. You can, I'm sure we, somehow we can, we can arrange tours. Go and look at, look at who's filling our prisons up. And they talk about this, this, immigration, this immigration thing. If, if they would start locking up business owners who hire undocumented workers, like they've been locking up blacks and Mexicans, Mexicans for selling weed for the last 40 years, our immigration problem would be over. Because when you start breaking up families of business owners, now you're looking at trying to solve a problem. But over-incarceration, capitalistic society, I mean, it's not easy being black in America in a nutshell. Thank you, guys. Thank you.